Hello, my name is Brenda. My channel is Handwork Maniac and you are all welcome. I can't believe today is two years since I started making floss tube videos. It um, kind of blows my mind. I don't know. It just, in some ways it feels like ages ago and then in other ways it just feels like it went by in the blink of an eye. Um, thank you so much for everyone who has commented. I have made so many friends, met so many people through FlossTube. I have finished so many things, got so much cross-stitching done because you guys are very motivating for me. So that's been wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. I just wanted to just send out huge thank yous for everyone who supported me in this the last two years. I thoroughly enjoy it. It's a gorgeous fall day here in Utah. It's going to be almost 70. I think we're going to get up to 70 today. And for Michelle and anyone else who lives outside the United States, that is 21 degrees Celsius. Today is my last day of fall break from the school where I work is on fall break. So I don't have work today. I had Thursday, Friday off and today. And I made my first video on the last day of fall break. So I don't know what the exact date was, but I just, for me, my anniversary is always the last day of fall break. And it makes me think of that. A year ago when I made my one year video, I had just gotten home from Stitch West and was so excited about that and was showing you all the things. This year is a little different. Although I do have to say, I got a lot more stitching done over this fall break than I got done when I was at the Stitch West retreat last year. <laughs> so that's a plus. I'm getting more stitching done. That's good. I went back to my original filming location just for this video, wearing the same shirt. That was kind of fun to go back and look at it. Um, a funny thing, when I made my very first video, I did not have a tripod, so I stacked up a whole bunch of encyclopedias and balanced my cell phone on the top to make the video. Well, my husband used the tripod and it's in his car at work. So I again had to pull out the encyclopedias and you're stacked up on top of a stack of encyclopedias. <laughs> Whatever works, right? Whatever works. Okay, we're gonna go, I'm gonna do some questions today. Oh, show you my magnet board, which I forgot to go get. So that means I'm going to have to edit. <laughs> you know how much I love to edit. Um, I had someone ask me to explain my rotation, so we'll do that. I'll show my whips. I'll do some shout outs. I'll show my haul and I'll do an old, old finish. And then I'll talk about plans. All right, let's do questions first. Jess Adair loves the plastic floss away bags. She commented that she loves the bag system. But she wanted to know what I do when there's way too many colors, when there's just a lot of colors. And I can do up to maybe 30, 40, 50 sometimes colors on floss away bags. It just makes a great big, you just have to get a great big ring. But at some point it's too it just feels like too much for me. It's hard to handle in this format. So then I do bobbinate them and put them in a bobbin box for that project. My heaven and earth designs are in on bobbins in a bobbin box. And so is sleeping princess. Seems like there's one more, but I can't think of it, but I prefer the bags. I'll use the bags as much as I can. I only use the bobbins and the bobbin box if there's just way too many colors to comfortably fit on a ring. I could do two rings, but for some reason at that point, it just is easier for me to put it in a bobbin box. Barbara Burdett wants to know if I have a key snap for each project. And I think Marie and I talked about this a little bit last week or last time, not last week. I try to have a key, I have way too many key snaps. I think, I know I've told you before, more than one person should own. Um, and I, I think I have enough now so that everything in my current weekly rotation can just stay on its Q-snap and I don't have to keep taking it off. So I don't have a Q-snap for every whip. I think I have around 30, low 30s whips. I knew what the count was at the end of Mania, but I've finished several things since then. So around 30 maybe. So I don't have 30 Q-snaps, but I have about 10 to 12-ish 
projects I work on in my weekly rotation every week, and I think I have about 10 Q-snaps. Because they're not that hard to move. They just clip, you just clip it right off. And it's easy, but for some reason, it, I like just leaving it on, on the stuff that I'm going to be working on again in a few more days. Cat Talks. She has a, a YouTube channel about books, but she also has some floss tubes on her channel. Kat, I didn't realize she had floss tubes until today. Just realized and watched several of hers. She has three so far. Check her out. She wanted to remind me that she was watching an old video of mine where I showed this as what I wish I was working on. I used to do a feature called what I wish I was working on. And I showed this Jim Shore Three Kings gorgeous piece. I have the bead, all the beads for it. It has a lot of beads in it. I don't have the floss, but I think it's just DMC floss, but I do have all the beads. And she was just reminding me that I needed to perhaps think about adding that to my mania plans this year so that I could get that stitch because it's so gorgeous. And she's right. I get stuff in my stash and then forget I have it. So thank you, Kat, for reminding me. Definitely that's on my radar for mania. Thank you. Pauline Dutton wanted me to sh explain my rotation, and I'll do that in a few minutes. Angela Springett um, is working on Pandemic, and she asked, she thought maybe I should share that Pandemic has a five stitch overlap, a five column or row overlap on the printed pattern. And that really confused her at first, so she thought maybe I should mention that for anyone else who's going to start Pandemic soon. Just realize that there is a five row overlap on the printed pattern. Uh, Sharon Magnolia Nana, she also has a lovely floss tube channel. I enjoy watching you, Sharon. She let me know that she bought the same chair from Ikea that we showed in our last video with Marie, and she said she loved it. It's fabulous. I'm so glad, Sharon, and I'm really tempted to buy one. Caroline Clothesline Crafts, she wanted to know if I had tried the 30 weight Sulky Floss, the thread. Um, and I have not. I think it sounds like a fabulous idea. I'm, I would be curious to know if any of you have tried it. If is it similar to one strand of DMC? Uh, how does it compare to one strand of DMC? I did have someone tell me that they like to use the 30 weight for the back stitching. When they're using the 12 weight for stitching on Pandemic, they like to use the 30 weight for the back stitching on Pandemic because so, it's thinner. Um, most people use the Sulky 30 weight on a sewing machine, I believe, but I, I haven't tried it yet. I would love to try it and see how it compares to DMC floss in size, how it would cover on, um, compared to DMC on stitching. Because you could have the same, it comes in all the same colors as the 12 weight, just might even come in more colors than the 12 weight, I don't know. Kimberly Bowman wanted to know if, the, if I felt like the Q-snaps clamps squished my stitches when I put them over the top of the part that's already stitched and I don't I haven't ever noticed that mine look flat or squished after I take the Q snap off um, I quite often use a piece of felt underneath the Q snap to keep the Q snaps tighter especially as they start to loosen up and if I have to fold over parts that have already been stitched I always fold the fabric over to the wrong side so that the clip is on the wrong side of the fabric. And there's quite often um, a couple of layers of fabric under there, so it kind of protects the stitching. I do know stitchers who um, feel like it does squish their stitches, and so they never put a Q-snap over the top of stitches. Um, they mostly use scroll rods, the ones that I know that are that, that bothers them. So definitely do what do what makes you happy. It doesn't bother me. I don't feel like my stitches look any different when I've had a clip over the top of the stitching. I don't ever put the clip directly on stitches. I always have either a piece of felt or a piece of warm and natural batting in between if I'm putting it, if I have to put it over stitching. But usually I can fold the fabric over and, and clip it on the wrong side of the fabric. Because if I'm stitching, putting a clip over stitching, that usually means I have a little bit out here that's already been stitched that I can fold over and put it on. So that's just um, personal preference. Do, do what works for you. Uh, 
Jennifer Kelly, my daughter Marie on the last video talked about how doing a border with on long dog samplers, that border that she almost always has that goes around the outside, is hard with blendable thread with the variegated thread because she's trying to match up the variegations as in the border so it doesn't all of a sudden change to a totally different color where it wouldn't normally. And she said that she stitches the border on her long dogs in a solid color just for that reason. She'll just pick a color that matches one of the colors in the variegated thread and she stitches the border in a solid color. And then Carol Reed said what she does is she saves one petite spool just to do the border and then she just uses that spool on the border so that she can just cut it and then keep stitching and cut it so that the variegation just keeps going like it normally would and then she doesn't have to worry about it. And then Jillian Ludeman asked about my American sampler. She, I believe she said she had started it and was wondering why I hadn't shown mine lately, wanted to see a progress report on it. I worked on it in the summer, Jillian, and then I didn't work on it again since then, which is why I haven't showed it. But I did get a, all these queen stitched flowers done right here. I was so excited to get all of those done. I just need to do the fill in, the alternating half stitch fill in that fills out in behind here to finish that side of the border. And then I'll need to come over and work on this side of the border. But this is American Sampler by Sandy Orton. Uh, I got it in a magazine. It was, this is what it looks like. It has a lot of specialty stitches in it. A lot of queen stitches, some satin stitch, some over one sections. That would mean on linen where you're usually stitching over two threads because of the size of the linen, you do a little tiny itty bitty section where you're stitching over one thread. It's itty bitty little stitches compared to the rest of the stitching. Mine is from the Cross Stitch and Needlework March 2011 magazine, but it's also available on the, um, oh, just escaped me. You're all yelling it to me. It's a website that Sandy Orton has a lot of her patterns on. Cooler Design Studio, K-O-O-L-E-R. It's also available there. And I'll unroll the top so you can see the top section. Because it has so many specialty stitches in it, it takes my uh, daytime brain. I have to think hard to do this kind of stitching. It's not relaxing. It, I still love it. It's just not that relaxing rhythmic stitch that you have when it's just cross stitch. Um, and I'm doing that with the called for Averasois silks in that, the version in the magazine. I, I'm not sure if all the versions are the same, but the version in the magazine calls for Averasois silks. All right, now I'm gonna have to go get my magnet board. Hang on. All right, I'm back. I showed my magnet board in my very first video, so I thought I'd show it to you again. This is how I keep track of all of my whips. It's just, uh, I bought it at Walmart. It's cardboard on the back and metal on the front. Um, I'm pretty sure it's made to put magnets on. And then this is just, you can buy magnet strips in a roll, comes in a roll, or you can buy the ones that are like a credit card, business card size, and you can cut them up. Or you can buy these little round ones. And then I just use um, sticky labels, like address labels, to cover over the top. I reuse the magnets, so I'll just put a new sticky label over the top and write on it another whip when I'm done with them. All these down here at the bottom are the finished ones. I save the magnets and turn them upside down when I finish the project. You'll notice in my first video, I had four things in Craft Prison, and they're all finished and done. That was another thing I noticed. All the whips that I showed in my first video have since been finished, so I was excited about that. But there are no projects in Craft Prison. That's always a good thing. That means I don't have any projects right now that I'm just can't figure out what I'm going to do about, or I'm sick to death of them, or I don't even know if I ever want to finish it. I love all my whips right now, so that's always a good thing. Um, I use my magnet board to 
I'm always moving it around. Uh, this is what I want to focus on this month, or this is what I want to finish by the end of the year. I'll scoot them around in columns and sections. I've colored the ones that are Mania projects in light blue. You can probably barely see it. This orange means that it's a um, counted canvas piece, similar to needlework. Kind of a cross between needlepoint, kind of a cross between needlepoint and cross stitch. Um, I'll put them in order of oldest to newest. I'll, I just love moving them around as I'm making my plans and looking at how many I have. I do have my two newest projects are not on here yet. I need to take care of that today. The new normal, I don't think, is on here. The long dog sampler, the new normal. And then the Friend Stitch um, Zoom retreat that I went to, we started a Christmas piece in that one by Bent Creek and, oh, I can never remember. I think it's Heart and Hand <laughs> um, by them. And I need to put that on here. Those are my two newest starts that I did not put on here yet. But this is every single one of my whips. I like to be able to see them all and touch them and move them around and organize them. And stay accountable kind of and keep track of what I have going. And I don't know where to put that. All right, so then I'll talk about my rotation for a minute. We'll pull out the handy dandy portable uh, whiteboard, which is really just a laminated poster. This side was where I'm tracking my um, media pieces that I started in May. Um, if I didn't, if I had a piece that was not finished from the mania before, it stays in as a whip. And then I also, I always add a few whips every year. I don't fill all my spots with new starts. But I printed a little picture this last May of all of my projects for mania. I do the, I did 20, first 20 days of May for 2020. So I was just going to show you the back side of the poster is still my projects that I started for mania. And I need to cross off the ones I finished because I finished several of them. But this side will be the rotation side. Okay, so I have a daily 30 piece and a daily 60 piece. So Lost No More, which I'll show you in a minute, the one with Jesus Christ and the sheep, um, that's a daily 30 piece. I usually work on that for the first 30 minutes every day that I sit down to stitch. I just pull it out, set a timer, stitch on it for 30 minutes, and then put it away. And then I started that in April around Easter time. That was nice. Um, and then I also have a daily 60 piece right now just because I have so many stitch alongs I'm in and I'm really trying hard to keep up with all my stitch alongs. So the first half hour is lost no more and then the next 60 minutes, the next hour, is working on one of my stitch along pieces. And I have those kind of divided up by days as to which one I'm going to work with. So the first hour and a half I sit down, that's what I do. I get home from work about 4 o'clock and... Uh, we're empty nesters. All our children are grown and gone. Um, my husband gets home from work about 3.30, but then he runs a moonlighting business until about um, business that he started until about 6 or 7. And then we have dinner really quick. doesn't take very long for two people to eat dinner together, <laughs> maybe half an hour. <laughs> and I don't, I don't spend a lot of time cooking dinner. I'm a, definitely a, I enjoy cooking, but um, I want it to be quick because I'd rather be stitching. So I don't spend a lot of time preparing dinner, usually simple stuff. And then we usually sit down in the evening and watch um, YouTube or documentaries or old movies in the evening, my husband and I. So I generally get around four, four to five hours of stitching every evening. If there's nothing else going on, we don't have a church activity or a family get together, I might get four to five hours of stitching in, in an evening because I stitch until my husband gets home for dinner and then we eat and then I stitch for a few more hours in the, um, after that. I have a Monday, Wednesday, Friday focus piece and it's usually a monthly focus piece. It, that focus piece changes every month. Um, if it's under about 120 by 120 stitches, I can usually finish it that month, but sometimes my focus piece is bigger. So I'm just focusing on it for the month, but it won't get finished, but quite often it gets finished. So I work on that on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, after my 30 and my 60. And on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, my 60, and right now my focus piece is Bump and Denight by Praiseworthy Stitches, because it's a fun Halloween piece. And then 
the stitch along that I work on for that daily 60 on Monday, Wednesday, Friday is the Linen and Threads 2020 stitch along and the Modern Folk Embroidery 2020 stitch along. So those are the two. So I might, um, I'll work on one of those for an hour and then move to my focus piece. And then sometimes if I finish the focus piece before the end of the month, that gives me more time to focus on these and get them caught up. This month I know Bumpin' Tonight won't get done. It's a large piece. So I'm going to have to change. Might have to start spending two hours on my stitch alongs <laughs> every day to get those caught up by the end of the month. Um, Tuesdays. Um, Tuesday and Thursday were originally the slots to finish things that I wasn't really excited about, but I wanted them to move along. So I tell myself on my Tuesday piece, just work on it for two hours. That's all you have to do. Work on it for two hours and then you can put it away and work on something else. And I was able to get several things done that I wasn't really enjoying but wanted to finish. But right now, my Tuesday and Thursday slots have ended up being um, pandemic is my Tuesday piece, which I love working on every Tuesday. And then on Tuesdays and Thursdays, my daily 60 up here stitch along piece is positivity rules and kringles. So I work on those two on Tuesdays and Thursdays for the first 60 minutes that I sit down. And then I work on pandemic for the rest of the night on Tuesdays. And on Thursdays, I work on lost no, not lost no more. Wrote the wrong thing there. That should be a new normal is my Thursday piece after I finish the daily 60 on these two Tuesday, Thursday stitch alongs. Are you totally confused yet? I can't even keep it straight. All right, Saturdays is when I have daytime stitching. So I like to stitch on Peaceable Kingdom by Catherine Theron because it has a lot of specialty stitches in it and the directions are a little more involved. So I have to be able to think hard and um, focus when I work on that one. So I usually work on that for a couple hours and I have a lot more stitching time on Saturday. I get all my chores done in the morning. I'm usually done by about noon. And then I stitch all afternoon and then in the evening, unless we have a family get together or something. And then I usually work on my stitching shelf, Heaven and Earth Design on Saturday for a couple hours. I do two squares on that because I'm doing it in 10 by 10 squares. And then I work on my full coverage Disneyland piece. I also do two squares on that one. And depending on how much time I have on Saturdays, I may work on these um, more than that. Or after I get those three done, I may switch to another project that I'm one of these other ones up here that I'm really excited about and want to put more time in. Or maybe I'll be working on the stitch alongs because they're not caught up. And then on Sunday, I just have, Sundays are really busy days for me. I have a lot of church responsibilities and meetings that we go to. So, and then we usually, before the pandemic, would quite often have all the family over for dinner. So Sundays, I usually only get a couple of hours of stitching done um, late in the evening, right before I go to bed. And I've been working on Huckleberry Farm on Sunday nights. All right, so that's my rotation. Let me know if you have any questions about that because, it, like I said, it's so confusing. I can't even figure it out sometimes. But I kind of like, I like having daily projects. I like having a, already a plan of what I'm going to stitch on because if I don't, then I get into that indecision trap where you just, oh, should I work on this one? Should I work on that one? I don't know. I should be working on this one, but I really don't want to. But if I work on something I really want to, but don't work on the one I don't want to work on, then I feel guilty. Not really guilty, but I don't feel really settled because I'm like, well, I should be working on this one, not this one. You know, it's just, it's a mind game. No one cares what I work on, but me. It's just a mind game. So I like having a plan so I don't have to think about it. I can just walk in the door from work, put my stuff down, get a drink of water and sit down to stitch and go to my happy place, right? Because we all like to be in our happy place. Okay, let's go to whips. We'll start with this one since I've showed it to you a couple times already. This is Huckleberry Farm by The Blue Flower. It's on 40 count Silk Weaver Elegance that I ran through the wash a few times to lighten it up, which is always risky. You don't know what's gonna happen when you do that with hand-dyed floss or hand-dyed fabric. Um, really enjoying this. I got uh, more than two hours on it yesterday. That was nice. Finished the alphabet, finished the house, finished this section of the alphabet here, which was a page finish, which is why I stopped right there. And then worked on this fun bear and beehive over here on the left. Stitching this with my friend Lonnie. 
who I believe restarted hers on a different piece of fabric. So I'm ahead now. Woo! But I'm thoroughly enjoying that. It's, I used the called for colors if I had them. It calls for over dyed cotton. Uh, mostly gentle arts, I think. And then the ones I didn't have, I pulled out of my stash that looked close to the picture on the front. Or sometimes the ones I had were not what the picture on the front looked like, so I changed to a different color that I liked better or that showed up better on this fabric. So it's kind of my own conversion out of my stash, I guess. Uh, where am I going to put these? All right. This is not one of the pieces in my weekly rotation. It's one of my mania starts from two years ago, but I pulled it out and worked on it this week. Sleeping Princess by Mirabilia. I'm doing mine on, I can't remember if it's 20. I did it on the called for count of fabric because I need the beads to fit. 32 count, it's stitched on 32 count, but not the called for color, it's water lily. I think the, the called for color is beach walk, I believe. But I liked water lily, so I used water lily. I worked on her hair. And the beautiful, um, it's like she has ribbons woven through her hair. Lots of beads in that section as well. Excuse me. That is where she is so far. This is one that was a lot of colors and was getting too hard to handle on a ring. So I have them in one of the little mini bobbin boxes. This is Lost No More, my daily 30 piece. It's amazing to see how much you can get done and just how much it just keeps moving along at daily. I was talking to my friend Colette, the highway stitcher, hi Colette, one day, and I said, you know, daily 30 really isn't that much. That's, if I only work on it four to five days a week, that's only two and a half hours that it's getting every week. But I also realized that because it just keeps getting that daily 30, it just keeps moving along. And it kind of surprises me how fast it moves along. I'm working on this section of his robe right here. I was able to finish his sleeve. This is a Dimensions kit called Lost No More. The original artwork is by Greg Olson. Um, I don't believe it's available anymore to buy new, but um, it's out there on the secondary market if you look for it. I'm using the kit fabric, which is kind of a tan colored Ada. I don't know what its real name is. And then I'm using the kit floss. Which I put in bags. That's how I like to do um, kits when I do them. I just put them in bags numbered with the kit number. Dimension uses their own numbering system because they dye their own floss, so it's got the dimensions numbers on the bag in numerical order. And then when I have to do blended threads, I use the little um, thread card that came with the kit. And when I use a blended thread, I write the symbol. Let's see if I can get it to show you. I draw the symbol next to it and then put the left, you know, I put two threads together to blend them, to use them, and then I had some left over, so I put it on here with the symbol written next to it. So that the next time I use, need to use that blended thread, I can check and see if I have one already put together. If I don't already have one put together, then I pull the two different color strands and put them together. But that keeps me organized on a kit project, especially that has lots of colors and lots of blended threads.
This is a bag from the Brass Button. That is an Etsy store, the Brass Button. Oh, this is Sky Blue Street, which I don't, I'm not sure if I, maybe I worked on this since last time I showed it to you. I worked on the door. This is by Soda Stitch. They're in South Korea. I bought mine on Amazon. And I am using the called for DMC on 36 count white linen. And I am using two strands of thread. 36 count, some people like one strand on 36 count, some people like two strands. I found, for my own personal preference, I prefer two strands. So I started this with one strand and then my daughter Catherine took it home at my Mother's Day and my birthday are close together. So she takes something home usually for several weeks and works on it for me and for my birthday and Mother's Day. And she took this one home this year and added another strand over what I had already stitched, the section that I had already stitched, so that I could just keep going with two strands. It was so nice of her. Something else I was to say about that, but I don't remember what it was. Called for DMC. Oh, so if you hear someone say one over one or two over one or two over two, that means... The first number is how many strands of floss you're using, and the second number is how many linen threads you're stitching over. If you're stitching on Ada fabric, that's woven into little squares. So we just call those one. You're stitching over one square. So if you're stitching on Ada, but you're using two strands of floss in your needle, then you would say you're stitching two over one. Two strands of floss over one Ada square. On linen, sometimes you work over two of the fabric threads on the linen equals one eta square. So if you're stitching over two threads on linen and you're using two strands of floss in your needle, then you say you're stitching two over two. Um, on, But sometimes you'll stitch over one thread. If it calls for one over one, tiny little stitches, or you might be stitching on a bigger count fabric like 25 count linen or even weave would be, because you're working over two strands, would be the same as like 12 and a half Ada. So it's bigger stitches, bigger squares. So quite often on 25 count, I'll just be stitching over one thread. So it's teeny little stitches that ends up being 25 stitches per inch instead of the 12 and a half stitches per inch it would be if you were working over two threads. So if you're working over one thread and you're using one strand of floss in your needle, then you say you're working one over one. Hopefully that makes sense. Because I quite often, I don't explain that and I just say this one's two over one, this one's two over two, this one's one over one. That's what I'm talking about when I say that. Um, so Sky Blue Street is two over two on 36 count linen. All right, this is my focus piece, the one I work on every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, Bumpin' to Night Farm, and it's stuck on the bag of, because <laughs> this one had quite a few colors. This is kind of getting up there to where it's a little awkward to have them all in that ring. This is another The Brass Button Shop bag. Love her bags. And this is where I am on Bumpin' Tonight. This is 40 count. No, oh, I haven't thought about this color for a long time. Really? I didn't write it on the pattern? Well, it's in the description box. Oh, maybe the sticker's still on it. Nope, you'll have to look in the description box. Sorry. I know it's 40 count and I know it's Silk Weaver, but I cannot for the life of me remember what color it is. I finished, I'm working on the house over here. It has a great big, that great big Victorian house over here. And purples and greens. 
finished the barn and the moon, worked a little more on the tree, finished some more of those pumpkins in the middle. This one has been very fun to work on this month. Oh, and I got a new needle minder with a pumpkin on it because I didn't have any October needle minders from the Fat Quarter Shop. I love it because it's nice and strong and big. And I'm using the called for colors on that one. I think every single one of them that calls for over dyed cotton and I think uh, mostly gentle arts, a few weeks dye works. And I think I actually have all the called for colors on that one. And I'm using one strand of floss over two linen threads. It's 40 count linen. Kringles by Little House Needleworks will look like this when it's finished. I'm working on this with my daughter Marie and my good friend Kim. We're kind of trying to do a room a month. And we're doing pretty good. I definitely need to get caught up for this month. This is what I have so far. And So I have not started on the room for October yet. We're doing this room, but I did do a little bit of the roof up here. I just need to add one more color, the lighter brown in that roof section. Then I can start on this room down here. This is 32 count Stormy Sky by Zweigert. It's a flat gray on the back and then they have screen printed this um, modeled look on the front. So it's only printed, this modeling is only on the front side. I think that's kind of cool. I am using the called for colors, two strands of floss over two fabric threads on this 32 count linen. This is not the called for linen. The called for linen I think is 30 count Parisian gray. So it's close. <laughs> And this is a House of Stitch and Stash bag, which I also love. I actually won this one at Stitch West last year. It's got Christmas things on it. Rika is not making bags right now. It's so sad because she just moved to Germany, but I love her bags as well. I'm sorry, I have a runny nose today. We need some rain desperately pollen count is through the roof for all the weeds, which is what I'm allergic to, of course. So, need to put those away later. We have another wildfire burning. I can see it from my house, but not really close to my house. It's in Orem, Mount Timpanogos. It's on the face of Mount Timpanogos. I can hear, still hear the big fire retardant plane going back and forth over, overhead keeping them in my prayers today, all those firefighters, those people who live right there. This is the linen and threads stitch along. It is a free stitch along. If you go to their website, you can still get all the PDF patterns. It comes out once a month. It is a mystery. We don't know what each section will look like before we get it. And I can't remember if it ends in December or January. It was a 12 month stitch along. I'm using four different colors of over dyed dark blue silk and then one color of this gray green color. The colors are listed in the description box below that I'm using. This is the October section. I think it included this maybe, I can't remember. And this and these letters and then this section and then this this motif up here which I'm still working on. So this one's close to being caught up I guess. This motif right here has ghosts in it which I thought was so cute to give us um, a seasonal motif for October. And this one I think looks like a bat peeking over the side there. Or a crab maybe. These could be bat wings. They could be little crab legs. Um, and then he also included an alternate motif if you did not want to put ghosts on your project. So 
Well, that's where that one is. This is 40 count linen in the color alabaster. And I'm using one strand of silk over two linen threads. pandemic. If you can only fold linen over twice to fit it under a key snap and even that you're wondering every time if you're gonna crack that I can usually do fold it over twice which means there's there's three layers plus the actual stitching layer under there. Can't do more than that, you'll crack the cue snap. But this is so such a big piece of fabric that it still had all of this, even if I fold it over twice. And sometimes that gets in your way if you're stitching down here close. So I fold this part over and I'm using the quilting peels to hold it up out of the way. And I have another one that sits right here. But I was able to work on all of this part up here. I'm using Sulky 12 weight thread for this in a blendable color, Cactus. And then I'm using um, a solid color, Sulky uh, teal color. The actual color numbers are in the description box for all the animals. I'm using one strand of DMC and a dark green color that matched one of these colors in here for the back stitching on the green parts and on these blue parts that have teal parts that have back stitching. I'm using one strand of Really Tealy by Classic Color Works. Thoroughly enjoying this. I actually hit the top of the pattern right here. I finally, I started in the middle. This is the top. There's just a little bit of a border right above that. So that was fun to hit the top. My daughter Marie is doing it in the color Blue Heaven, which we showed you last video. And she's using a, a like a gorgeous orangey fire color for her accent color. I can't remember what color that was. Um, If you're not familiar with sulky 12 weight cotton, it comes, you can get it on a king spool or you can get it on a petite spool that's this size. And I love it. This is 36 count white linen and I love the coverage of one strand of sulky 12 weight over two fabric threads on the linen. I think the coverage is gorgeous. And on my new normal, I'm doing it on 40 count linen, and I think one strand of Sulky also looks gorgeous on that. And I've done a piece where I did one strand of Sulky on 32 count linen, and I think it looks gorgeous on that as well. So just can use it all on all kinds of things. Crazy stuff happening today. Crazy. So now I have to refilm this section. Oh my goodness. All right. I think we were up to... Modern Folk Embroidery. This is a yearly stitch along. You do have to purchase this one and then you get part of it in your email each month, but you do get to see the, what the whole piece looks like before, at the very beginning, before you purchase it. And I was able to finish the September section. I can't remember if I had it done last time I showed it to you or not. But I have not started on the October section yet. It's on 25 count even weave, one over one. One strand of silk over one fabric thread. And I'm using this gorgeous Mrs. Sadas over dyed silk in the colorway Supernova. She has an Etsy shop, she's in Spain. And then the green is the, a Belle Soie 
over dyed Granny Smith silk. I need to finish up linen and threads and get busy on that one. Positivity stitch along. I'm so close to being done. And um, this is the last month, so it'd be done done today, I hope. As soon as I'm done with this video. I just have the word fun right here and then the door. And then this stitch along will be finished. It was a five month stitch along. It was a birthday gift from my sister-in-law Juliana and my brother Walter. They're stitching it as well, Juliana and her daughter. It's on 40 count, it's a really light pink linen. It's 40 count blush by Zoigart. And I'm using the called for DMC, one strand of floss over two fabric threads. downstairs. If you're gonna edit, you might as well do a million edits, right? This is Disneyland by Nenny Designs. I purchased it on Etsy. It's a full coverage conversion of an old retro poster, I believe. I finished the square right here and then did the square right here. This is the head of a boy and a girl who are in the teacup ride. Loving how that one's turning out. Enjoy that one. That's a Saturday piece. I usually work on Saturdays. I usually do two squares per Saturday at least. This is a stitching shelf by Heaven and Earth Designs. I'm working up here in this corner. And this is where I am so far. I was able to finish the last two squares right here to finish out this column. I'll do one more column to finish out this scene. And then I think I'm going to move down and do the couple pages down here next. I stitch in 10 by 10 blocks using the parking method. And that's on 25 count even weave as well. Same as modern folk embroidery. Um, Disneyland is on 40 count dwarf. One strand over two fabric threads. This one's on 25 count even weave and it's one strand of floss over one fabric thread. And then still missing one. This is Peaceable Kingdom by Catherine Theron. It was a class piece. So you have to take her class to get the pattern and she provides the kit and everything. I work on this Saturday mornings because that's when my brain is fresh. <laughs> it's got complicated, um, it's got complicated specialty stitches in it and then the directions are involved so I have to be able to think clearly and remember where I was and pay attention and focus. Um, this middle section right here in this, I'm on this third section at the bottom and this middle section is a full coverage one over one seam. The rest of it's over two threads except for some specialty stitches that are weird but this middle section right here is one over one. So it's one strand of floss over one fabric thread. I worked on filling in the grass up here behind this part. The directions um, called for a tent stitch there with either one strand of silk or two strands of DMC that has both of those in that section. 
but I don't enjoy tent stitch. And this is a very loose, open weave 32 count. So I opted to do one strand of silk and cotton, didn't matter which one, with a full cross. And because it's such an open, stretchy weave of fabric, it's covering really nicely, but it's not so thick that it's distorting the fabric threads. I was really hoping to have that done by the end of the year. I don't know. That middle over one section is taking forever. And then the new normal. I saved for last because I wanted to talk about thread management for a minute. It's a long dog sampler, the new normal. I, um, you can see that I colored on it with my colored pencils, trying to decide where I wanted the different colors that I chose. Love this, love this piece. This is my Thursday piece right now. This is what it looks like so far. I worked a lot on this green bubble right here. It's kind of the ocean bubble, it has an ocean scene in it. This is 40 count linen that I mentioned earlier, and I, this is silky weight, silky 12 weight floss or thread. It's thread. Um, and I think it still looks gorgeous even on 40 count, one strand. I was afraid it'd be too thick, but it's not. I chose 10 silky solid colors for this piece. And I told you two weeks ago that I like to, when I'm finished stitching with a color but I still have some left on my needle, I like to just coil it up and I'll usually stick it back in the baggie, but these um, spools are a little too bulky in bags. That wouldn't work well on a ring. So um, I was talking about how I can't put it back in the bag, so I like putting it down on a little um, felt thread bed that I have next to my chair. They have lots of different names, but it's just a little square with felt on top and fabric on the back, and it's got some kind of stiffener in the middle. It's because you can put a thread down on there and it won't go anywhere. It'll stick to the felt or the flannel or whatever it is on there, the fuzzy material. So I was asking you if there, if someone made one. I thought I'd seen one somewhere, but I didn't know how to search for it or what it was called. Something like that that would fold up and snap so that you wouldn't lose any of your threads if you left them all on there and just wanted to fold it up and put it in the project and then open it up next time. So you were fabulous and you told me all of the different things that you knew of. And so then of course I needed to go and went down a rabbit hole and needed to try them all, right? So this is from Dot Dot Goose Etsy store. There's cute bees on it. It opens up. This is felt. Has this little loop here in case you wanted to hook your scissors to it or something. And this cute little felt heart in the middle to put your needles on. But this is fabulous because you could put your little coils of thread on here and then snap it up and put it in the project and know they weren't you weren't going to lose them. This is a needle book from the Fat Quarter Shop. They sell it as a needle book. It doesn't have a closure. It just opens. But it does have these felt pages inside, which I think would also work well. I'd probably just safety pin it closed or something to make sure it didn't come open and lose them. But I thought that was beautiful. You guys told me about Rag Tag Art Quilt store on Etsy, and they make this beautiful product. Got a bird on it, and it has a snap. And inside, it came with a needle minder. You see that that's a fabric colored, fabric covered needle minder. And then it has two pockets on this side, and then this side is the fuzzy felt for you to put your threads on. But that would close up too. So you could save all those little pieces of thread in your project. Um, Fat Quarter Shop. Jan Hicks was showing a product that she got from Jan Hicks was showing a a product she bought from That's So Kelly Co. on Etsy. Gorgeous little book that opens up. Um, 
I think it was a little project bag kind of thing. It wasn't a Bitsy Bob. It was, I'm sure you all know the name of it. Check out her store. You'll see it. <laughs> but she had this project bag and it had a pocket on the inside made with clear plastic so that you could put something like a flat um, thread bed. And I think she makes those as well. You could slip that down inside the pocket in that clear pocket and then the threads wouldn't go anywhere. And I was thinking that was a fabulous idea. But of course I'm not fast enough to get any of the That's So Kelly Co products because they go so fast. But on um, that quarter shop they have these bitty boards, which is kind of the same idea. They use them for quilting, mostly. They have bigger ones so that you could lay out the pieces of a quilt block and see how the colors are gonna look. This is one of their smallest ones, I think. It's a seven by seven. So it's felt on top, a fuzzy material, and it sits. It's hard. You won't be able to fold it, it's hard. But it would sit next to your chair and you could put threads down on it and it wouldn't go anywhere. But then they also have this bag on their website, that quarter shop. Done is better than perfect. And I love that saying. I first heard that in 2010 when our EGA chapter hosted the Rocky Mountain Region Seminar in Salt Lake City and Monica Ferris came and was a speaker there. And that was the first time I'd heard someone say that. She said in her talk, done is better than perfect. And I love that. So when I saw that they had this bag with that on it and that it would also be the right size, it comes with a strap as well if you wanted it to like go over your shoulder. I won't be using it for that but this 7x7 seven seven bitty board fits in here and you could zip it up so the threads would stay on there and wouldn't go anywhere. So I thought that was also a great idea. See? See the rabbit hole I was lost in? And then Victoria of oh my goodness of Victoria's Crafty Room is her uh, YouTube channel. She also has an Etsy store. She makes wonderful videos. She's a school bus driver. I met her at StitchCon. She's lovely. A lot of fun. She sent me this beautiful little thread holder. It is fuzzy on the inside. You can see that my threads are stuck in there because I was using it. Snaps closed so they don't go anywhere. And she sent it with this beautiful project bag. allergies today are out of control. This gorgeous small sized project bag which for me is perfect to hold all of these silky colors in here. It has the most beautiful zipper pull. And this beautiful tassel. Thank you, Victoria. This is the most beautiful bag and this beautiful little thread holder in it. So this is in my new normal project now. Thank you so much. Okay, on to the next section. Sorry about that. One of the reasons I hesitate doing shout outs is because I know so many people who do floss tubes and I'm always afraid I'm going to leave someone out and then they'll feel bad. I think I have 150 channels on my subscription list. So I just, I know lots of people who do floss tubes. I watch a lot of floss tubes. If my husband's not home and I'm stitching, I'll usually watch him floss tube. Um, he doesn't mind. It doesn't matter if he's home. If he's watching TV with me, we watch something else. But if he's not sitting right there next to me watching, then I'm usually watching floss tube while I stitch. Um, so I think what I'll do is I'll list some of a lot of the channels that I know them. So I watch them a lot because I know them personally. And then I'm not going to do my favorites. I'm just going to try and get better at um, giving you a list every week of some of the ones I watched that week. And then that way no one will feel bad because I listed my favorites, but I didn't list them because I have 
way too many favorites to tell you all in one video. Okay, so some people that I know personally, and I love watching them. Mary is an old, old friend, a stitching friend of mine. We met at a retreat clear back in 2006, something like that. She started making floss tubes. So hers is Mary's Stitch and Time. And I'll make a list of all these floss tubes that I mentioned down in the description box. Mary's Stitchin, without a G on the end, just Stitchin Time. She's done three videos so far. Go check her out. I loved seeing all of her projects and getting caught up with her. She's doing some beautiful projects. Colette, my friend Colette, Highway Stitcher. You've heard me talk about her before. Becca, my lovely friend Becca that we met at StitchCon and sat next to each other at the table from My Stitchy Home. That is her channel. And they just moved. And so she didn't do any videos for a little bit, but she just made another video. So you need to go check her out. Deb and Kef of Snug Harbor Crafts. They just live up north of me in Utah and they did the Stitch West retreat last year. They're so fun. Pam and Steph, watch them every Monday. That's kind of a ritual. Just keep stitching. I come home from my crazy Monday work day and then kick my shoes off and sit down and watch them while I stitch. Rika, House of Stitch and Stash. She makes fun videos to watch. Uh, Renee of Gazelle's Needlework. She hasn't made any recently. Renee, I miss your videos. Kyle, Stitching and Sound. Hi, Kyle. Met him at StitchCon. Christy, Crosshatch Quilts, lives out in Vernal, which is where I grew up. So it's fun. I ran into her at my LNS, which is the Craft Center of Fine Stitchery in Salt Lake City. If you ever get a chance to go there, it's amazing. Definitely check it out. But I ran into Christy there, and then we figured out that she lived in Vernal, which is where I grew up. That was fun. Jenny of Cricklewood Crossing. She is here local to me. Met her one day. Diana Zaslow. I met her at StitchCon, and I miss, she hasn't made videos for a while. I miss her videos. And then the Sassy Stitch and Sisters and Brother. I love their channel. I've also met them at Stitch West and their mother, who is a stitcher. Um, they haven't, I need to check and see if they've made some recent videos. Okay, so the next people are not my favorites, but some ones that I have watched this week. So if I don't mention you, don't feel bad because I'll watch you probably next week. I just can't get to everybody in a week. Mel, Patchy Pony Stitcher. She's in Tasmania. Brian at Blitz Stitch. He's in Arizona. Georgia Girl Stitching. Love her. Michelle, Mama Loves You GB. I love her channel. Elizabeth Ann Can Stitch. Love her channel. Jenny, the long dog stitcher. Kimberly at the Fat Quarter Shop. I don't watch her quilting video every week, but I do watch her floss tube video every week. That's fun to watch. Cross Stitch with Luda in Ukraine. Kim Hollenbach, I love hers. 911 Stitcher in California. Stitching Jewels, not sure where she lives. Gable Stitcher, I love hers. Carla Bean Crafty, and Stitch Bliss Corner. So those are some of the ones I watched this last week. And then my husband and I um, watch some YouTube channels that are not floss tube channels, but I thought it would be fun just to tell you two that we watch regularly that we really enjoy together. One is Cruising the Cut, which is about uh, narrowboat living in Great Britain. Love that one. And then The History Guy. We always watch The History Guy. Short snippets of forgotten history that deserve to be remembered. Love those. I just It's always fun to hear people tell you what YouTube channels they watch besides FlossTube, right? Okay, let's get on to haul. This, oh, this calendar is by Sam Sarah. It's called Fun Everyday Perpetual Calendar. They're on stitched on perforated paper and then glued to cardstock pieces that fit on this um, metal frame that you can still purchase. In case I get questions about that. Okay, I needed, I, I don't own all of the sulky 12 white colors. I'm tempted to get, to tell my husband that that's what I want for Christmas. I'm not sure yet. 
but I did order their um, sample card. But they have a printed uh, paper one that's like a dollar, I think. And then they also have this, I think it was $15 on the Sulky website, sulky.com. But it has real thread. So it shows all of their 12 weight solid colors and all of their 12 weight blendable colors. And it's actual little strands of floss so that you can And then this front part shows you the blendables, what they, I love, they have this on their website too. It's hard to tell sometimes when all the colors are blended up together what it's going to look like, but it does a little bit of a stitching, like on a sewing machine, and shows you what those colors would look like if they were all stitched out, which is really nice because it can kind of give you a better idea of what that blendable color would look like if you stitched with it. And this part's just printed. Okay, so I got that, but then I thought, well, if I'm ordering this from Sulky. I really ought to get some floss while I'm there. And they have this lovely color called Summer Woods. It's number 4090. And it's kind of a, it's um, some greens with some gorgeous um, orange and gold color in it. It's kind of an autumn color, but it's called Summer Woods. I got four of those because I'm sure there will be a long dog or something that I want to do in that color and then I have wanted the DMC color card for 35 years why I did waited till now to buy it I do not know I got this one from 123 stitch you can also buy this in the you can get it at Joann's sometimes they'll have this one but they almost always have the printed one it's just the printed colors which is extremely helpful but this one is the actual little strands of thread one. It goes on forever. So I was very excited about that. Right when you're doing your own conversion, these are very handy. I'd like to use Sulky more, but I need to know. There's not a lot of patterns that call for the Sulky 12 weight, so it'd be nice to know to be able to figure out how to, to convert it from the DMC to what sulky color I can pull that out and choose a matching color. And then DMC, I'm constantly looking up, trying to use, to, you know, you, you don't have that um, over dyed cotton color that it calls for, but you want to know about what color it is. So maybe you could look in your stash and see if you have something close. And they'll usually, patterns will usually tell you what the DMC conversion is. So then I go to pull out the DMC color, but I don't own that color because I'm missing a few. So then I don't have any idea what range color I'm looking for in my stash. So I love the DMC color card for that reason. So I got both of those. I don't remember how much the DMC color card was on one, two, three stitch. And then I think I mentioned last time that I, two times ago, that I bought the digital subscription to the Cross Stitcher magazine out of Great Britain. And I happened to be looking for another pattern that I saw in there because it I bought the version that gives you the current year plus it gives you access to the last five years I believe of their magazine so I was looking through those issues looking for something and while I was passing other patterns printed a couple out that I just thought were gorgeous that I knew I was going to stitch someday this one is called sleigh bells ring and this is in the cross stitcher January 2017 issue. I just think that is so cute. I love that city down below. The digital version doesn't give me the issue number. It just tells me that it's January 2017. And then this is also from Cross Stitcher, the November 2015 issue, and it is called Festive Flurry. I also just love the village, the buildings in that. That is so pretty. If I can see who it's by really quick. Yeah. 
Nope. I should have written that on the front, sorry. This one is from the November 2017 edition and it is called Star of Wonder. That was gorgeous. And then this one is called City of Romance and it was in the February 2018 issue of The Cross Stitcher. I love that one. Apparently I was on a, a village's city kick because I just noticed these are all cities or villages. Love those colors and I love buildings. This, I got another bag from the Brass Button Shop, a beautiful fall bag, and you can't see it, but it has sparkly gold around all of these pumpkins. It already has a project in it. It's my Long Dog Samplers Arcade project, because I thought that was a perfect project for this bag. So let me move it over a little bit so you can see the inside fabric. Such a beautiful bag. So, no, I don't go by that rule that you can't use it until you show it on floss tube. I use it. I, and then I try and remember to show you. And then the Fat Quarter Shop. I think they're doing a stitch along with this next year. In the so there, I'm not sure if there will be a way to buy this pattern later, but right now it's the Bonnie and Camille quilt book. And then, so this is a book showing you how to make this quilt and several other quilts in here as well. It's a beautiful book, but it has one cross stitch project in it that looks like that quilt only in cross stitch. And I, there's something about it. I just love that pattern. So I'm going to share this book with a quilting friend that I have because I have made quilts in the past, but I'm not really interested in making this quilt. I just want to stitch that piece that's in the back. <laughs> um, and the piece is called Shine On Cross Stitch. And I know that the Fat Quarter Shop, I think, is having a Shine On Stitch Along next year. I bought that pattern and then I've been loving this bag that they have on there. They've had this for quite a while on their website. It's a mesh, plastic mesh bag. I just think, and it's got a fat bottom. And I bought this um, scissor minder, fob, whatever you'd like to call this. It matches the shine on pattern, but I bought that to put, I'll keep it in this bag when I stitch it. And I want to stitch that. I would love to stitch this in the Sulky 12 weight cotton. So it calls for Cosmo thread. And I'm sure they will have a Cosmo pack. They probably already do. I think they do. A Cosmo pack that you can buy that goes with this pattern. But it also lists the DMC conversion. And I will probably use my conversion cards to convert it to um, silky 12 weight cotton and I'll probably do it on either 36 count linen or 40 count linen but I can't start anything before the end of the year because I'm really trying to finish some things by the end of the year so this will be I don't know if this will be in my mania plans or I'll start it next year sometime not sure yet all right and then Georgia Girl Stitching started a Carolyn Manning design called Beachcomber in the summer sometime. And every time I watch her and see the progress of that, I just think, oh, I love that. I love that. I need, I need to stitch that. So I bought the pattern. I bought the PDF version and printed it out. Oh. And then I bought the DMC floss for it and went ahead and kitted it up. I don't have fabric for it yet but I'm sure I will start one of these Carolyn Manning designs next year. I want to start it right now. 
And I don't know. Maybe I'll have a bad day and I'll end up starting it. I don't know. But those are the beautiful colors that are all... I was surprised how many colors are in it. And that's one of the things that excites me because you know how I hate stitching the same thing four times. But because there are so many different colors in there, I'm wondering how it will be just, um, just enough interest for me to keep going, I think. And then I also got by Carolyn Manning, this one called Watermelon. Watermelon Tourmaline. I love the pinks and greens in that one. And these are the colors for that one. And then my friend Sharon W. started this one this last week. It's a Heaven and Earth Designs called Autumn. I think on the website it was Autumn Cat, perhaps. It's by Miria Petit. Petit? But I think that is so pretty. So I need to purchase that, and it's all Sharon's fault. And I think that's finally the end of the haul section. <laughs> okay. I have an old, old, is that what's next? Old, old finish. This is for Elizabeth of Elizabeth Ann Can Stitch and for Michelle, who both recently bought this pattern. And when I saw that, I just thought, oh, I stitched that. Where is that? So this is a game board sampler by the drawn thread. So I thought I'd show this this week as my old, old finish. And I put a year on it, so apparently I finished it in 2005. It's the called for colors. It's probably the called for fabric because that's what I did back then. Thoroughly enjoyed working on this. It was very easy to say, because it's in squares like this, you know, it was very easy to say, oh, I want to finish two squares a week or something. It was, a, it was just a fun, fun piece to work on. The houses are right side up, and then the in-between squares motifs are the other direction, so that if you were actually playing checkers on it, or chess, I suppose. I don't know if it's got the right amount of squares for chess, or checkers, actually. So that when you're sitting across from each other, one of you sees the houses right side up and one of you sees the other motifs right side up. I thought that was cool. I do know some stitchers who decided they didn't want to stitch it that way and they stitched the in-between motifs the other way around so that they could hang it on the wall and it would all be right side up. But I thought it was kind of cool that they were upside down. And I always thought maybe I would finish it in a tray, a square tray so that you with a glass top on it so you could actually, or plastic top, so you could play checkers on it. So I need to do that. I need to look into either seeing if there is a tray that would be the right size or maybe having my dad make me one. I don't know. Plans. My plans are to keep working on Bumpin' Tonight as my focus piece for the rest of October. To get caught up on my stitch alongs, Modern Folk Embroidery, Linen and Threads, Finish Positivity today and get caught up on Kringles, do my monthly section for Kringles for October, and then work on the rest of my regular rotation, trying to get, um, just keep going, keep plugging along, try and get as much done as possible before the end of the year. I don't know why the end of the year is always one of those, what can I get done by the end of the year? That and mania, it's always, what can I get done before mania starts? My mania projects, so. I hope you all have a fabulous day. I'll be back at work tomorrow, but hopefully I'll be back on here making a video in a couple of weeks. And we'll see you later. Bye-bye. And I was just kidding. I had one more thing I was going to show you and I completely forgot. I haven't done any knitting for a couple of years. You know how I'm a process stitcher? Like, I don't care when it's going to get done or what I'm going to do with it when it gets done. I just like stitching on it and I just like stitching every day. Well, I'm definitely a project knitter. So I only knit when I want the end project. And it's usually for um, 
a baby blanket for a grandchild or a little baby sweater or something. Went for knitting. I don't know why I only knit things for babies. So I don't, I don't knit every day because, like my mother is an expert knitter. She knits oh, the most gorgeous things. But apparently I only knit when I want the end project. But I've been seeing everybody stitch the triangle shaped shawlettes or scarves. They wear them like a scarf. And I just think they're so pretty and I want one so that I can wear it to work like a scarf. So everyone's stitching the hitchhiker. I know you've seen it a million times. Everyone's knitting this hitchhiker triangle shaped shawlette scarf thing by Strickmick. And I am using a Knit Picks Fingering Weight Yarn in the colorway Stroll. And I think, yes, I realize it's going to be big, huge stripes on here, but I think it will be beautiful, especially when it's looped around like a scarf. I'm a little rusty. I haven't knitted for a couple of years, but... This is my progress so far. So I just wanted to show you that book to you. Thanks. Bye.